Well, if you're going to look in radio, then it only makes sense. And this is this has been a something that's been changing recently. Is if you're going to look in radio, look everywhere. Look at every possible techno signature you can think of and see if it might be there or it might not be. And that's one thing that that I think there's not enough work done on is is sort of the candidates like Jabilsky Star or HD 139139, where we don't exactly know what it is, but as soon as it looks weird and potentially alien, all work on it stops. And I think that now is the time to change that and take a fresh look at these weird potential techno signatures. I, I agree. I think uh, there's an experience that a lot of astronomers have at some point, which is like uh, the driving force. Let's say you're young and you work on, you discover some anomaly. And you get super excited, like this coolest thing ever, this anomaly, and you invest months into exploring it. And then in the end, you discover that this was something super mundane. And then maybe again, some time passes and the same thing happens. And I think what happens is that lots of astronomers develop some kind of, over time, some type of experience of that when it's an anomaly, 95% of the time, it's something mundane. And since they want to publish and make good careers and do serious science in quotation mark, it means that anomalies very often get overlooked because people assume that, yeah, it's going to be 90% probability of that this is something boring and uninteresting or instrumental and 10% probability that this is something real. I better take uh, a more safe road and I go for more safe science. And in that way, a lot of anomalies are, like remain unsolved. While I think the most fun thing is actually to explore anomalies. If we don't do that and stay on the safe side, sure, we can learn a lot. But it's not going to be as intriguing and as adventurous as the more risky road. It's a high payoff, though, because if you discover an alien civilization, you've just made probably the biggest scientific discovery in the history of humanity, that we are not alone. But what if there is something even crazier than an alien civilization? Something even crazier to do, to be discovered that you cannot really imagine right now, but you you would discover it, and it would make the alien civilization look like a mundane explanation. None of the above. In other words, yeah, that it's it's something, but it's not an alien. But it isn't. It isn't. It isn't from here. <laughs> Well, that requires paradigm changes, but paradigm changes are common in human history. And for example, someone in the, the medieval world had no idea quantum mechanics existed. And maybe this works like that, that we just have no conception of, of what might be there. And it might be weirder than aliens in the end. Yeah. And I think like there is some kind of idea that I see in a lot of my fellow colleagues, and that is something like that. We have already discovered all the important physics. There is nothing big and new to be discovered, which I find super weird. The first question that hits my mind is, okay, so if you don't think that anything new can be discovered, then what's the point of doing all this research? Well, of course, they will reply that they want to understand the natural processes and into a finer detail and so on. But I find it so hard to for, for me, it's a point of view that is very different from my own, because if you look at like physics, most has been done in the last 200 years. And what is 200 years in the history of humanity? It's a short time period. And now imagine you have some civilization that has been there for one million years. I think they will, they will know so much more about physics than we ever, or that we will do at this point, that there is, I think there's an immense world of discoveries ahead of us ahead of the humans and it, it, it would be so cool to be part of that and see some of it the thing is though is that the universe throws curveballs and we see hints right now of, of a fifth force you know and things like that and maybe a, you know another planet in the solar system planet nine we see all these mm -hmm. indicators and things that change our paradigm and we need to be prepared for that. But in defense of science, most scientists I've known actually really get intrigued when there are discrepancies, hints of new physics and things like that. So at least there still is an open debate. It's not a dogma. It's not, it hasn't descended completely into a dogma yet. I think so too. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I exp was thinking a little bit too dark and I just remember a couple of conversations sometimes <laughs> that stuck in my mind. You're right. Many scientists are very excited when there's some new anomaly. But there I remember people were super excited when there was this uh, uh, neutrino 
tra- neutrinos traveling faster than the speed of light at CERN. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. And I, well, it turned out to be a bad cable or something. But <laughs> <laughs> That's yet another example of when anomalies turn out to be have some very mundane ex- explanation. It's true that you can have, well, misinterpretation and knowing that your data may be flawed. And, you know, there's all kinds of things you got to go through the whole list to make sure that, you know, confirmation bias, all of these things to make sure that what you're seeing is real. But that's what peer review is for. Exactly. 